In this video, we will implement the beam finite element that we derived in a previous video. A link to it appears here. And the starting point that we'll use is the code for the bar element, which was also derived or, or written in a previous video. The link to that appears here. And we're just going to go and edit this code a little bit to make it suitable for a beam and then run a couple of example problems. So the first thing I'm going to do is we don't need the bar 3 element. I'm going to get rid of that. And down here where we run the bar 3 element, I'm going to get rid of that too. Um, let's expand this definition and we'll go about editing it. So first of all, this is going to be now the beam element. I'm not going to change the restrained degrees of freedom yet, but what we obviously need to do is change how we determine our, our element mass and stiffness matrix. First of all, I'm going to create something, well, we'll call it the length. The length, <clears throat> we'll just assume it's unit length, but it will be divided by the number of elements. Um, then I'll define a constant that I'll call C sub M which is just rho times a. And we'll just call that 1. It's always easiest when testing these things just to put in 1 for the element properties, uh, the material properties, I should say. And then after that, you can always adjust it accordingly. But since in this problem we haven't been given any material properties, uh, it's easiest just to put in 1 for them now. Similarly, we'll define a constant ck. Uh, and that is equal to E times I, which is the flexural rigidity. And again, we'll call that 1. Um, let's see how we want to do this. So the next thing I've got to do is change my mass and stiffness matrix. And this is precisely now what we defined in a previous video. And just to save a little bit of time, I'm going to copy and paste this, since I don't believe it teaches anything by sitting and blindly wasting time doing this. But fundamentally, it's now a 4x4 four four matrix, each of these matrices. And here is the matrix. I've done it row by row so that it's easier to view it. Uh, this element, for instance, is 4 times L times L. That would be 4L squared uh, minus 22 times L, etc. And notice that at the end of this, I've multiplied it by CM and then times L divided by 420. And again, if you click on this link to the right, you'll see exactly where all of this came from. Uh, one point that I wanted to make is because we've defined CM and CK as 1.0, therefore it's a float, Python knows that if any of these numbers is a float, it should convert everything to float. So, for example, I don't need to put 420.0 because I'm multiplying by CM, which is 1.0, it's going to treat everything like a float. Okay. Similarly, for the K matrix, I've done the same thing. Put in the K matrix here in terms of integers. And then CK is a float. And so it's going to convert everything to floats. All right. That's all I want to say about this. The next thing that needs to be changed is here where we construct the global stiffness and mass matrices. Um, for the case of the bar element, the total dimension of the global problem was always the number of elements plus one. In this case, because each element is a two by two matrix, this will change to two times the number of elements plus two. Might take a little bit of thinking just to make sure that you're comfortable with that. But if you do just on a, a back of an envelope, look at what a one degree of freedom problem would be for the beam element, which has two degrees of freedom on each node, on each end. Um, do the same thing for a two or a three degree, a three element model, and you should be able to convince yourself that what I'm writing here is correct. Okay, so the global size is now two times the number of elements plus two. Okay, the next thing we need to do is take each element and convert it to global coordinates. This needs to be changed a little bit. In the case of the bar element, uh, we positioned the element matrix within the global system at these coordinates, num elements plus one. Um, in this case, it's going to be, again, 
excuse me, not that we didn't position it, we position it here in this line. Uh, the first thing we need to do is expand it to the, the size of the global problem. So this is just exactly the same as we've done above. I'm just going to copy and paste it. This is now the size of it. And then in the next line, we need to place it. You know, I'm going to go ahead and save this before I forget, since I don't want to overwrite this code. I'm just going to call it FEM Beam. And by the way, the, the source code for this is available at the link below. You can download it from GitHub. <clears throat> but uh, in placing this, First of all, we need to realize that the bar element was a 2 by 2 matrix, so it went from I to I plus 2. In this case, we're actually going to go from 2 times I, whoops, 2 times I, and instead of I plus 2, we need to have an extra 2. The size is 4 by 4, not 2 by 2, so we need to go to plus 4. The same thing here, 2 times I to Oops, I left out the 2. It goes from 2 times i to 2 times i plus 4. So that's 2 times i, 2 times i plus 1, 2 times i plus 2, and 2 times i plus 3. Remember that Python does not include the endpoint of the range. And also remember that in the case of Python, when i is 0, this will start at 0 because it's zero-based indexing. In other words, the columns and the rows of a matrix or a list in Python begin at index 0. All right, so we do the same thing here, 2 times i plus 4, 2 times i plus 4, and I'm going to copy that exactly for the, the stiffness matrix. So again, what we've done here is we've created a temporary matrix that is the size of the global system, and then we've taken our element stiffness and mass matrices and placed it within the global system, the, the temporary matrix. And this is how we determine the location. And again, it might require just drawing this out on a piece of paper, doing it for one element, two elements, three elements, to convince yourself that what I've written here is actually correct. All right, removing the fixed degree of freedom, that stays the same. There's nothing there that actually needs to be changed. Um, and that's it as far as changing the element. The restrained degrees of freedom will treat right at the very end, depending on the actual problem that we want to run this for. Um, so moving on, I'm just going to collapse this for now to make some room. This is no longer a two-bar element. It's a beam element. And again here, this is a beam element. The exact frequency, well, this depends on which problem we want to solve. In the first case, what we'll do is we'll solve the problem of the simply supported beam. And we know we derived this in a previous video, and there's a link to that over here too. But in a previous video, we determined that the fundamental frequency of a simply supported beam was equal to pi squared. So this just becomes pi squared. That's the exact solution. And then, let's see what else we need to change. MK, well, we need to change this. This is no longer called bar 2. It's called beam. Up here, we changed the name to beam. And I think that's it. Oh, well, down here, the error handling. We don't need this because we're not running the three-noted beam element. Instead of calling this error 2, we'll just call it error. And we don't need to plot error 2 and 3. We just need to plot the error here. Okay, I do believe that's it. We're done. Just that easy, we're able to accommodate the beam element. Now, the only thing that remains to be done is, since we're running the problem of the simply supported beam, we need to remove the corresponding degrees of freedom. And the way to do this is, let's just think about this for a second. The simply supported beam, we know that um, the first degree of freedom, which is the zeroth index, that needs to be removed, right? Because that's the displacement on the very left-hand side of the beam, is node zero. And we also want to remove the coordinate to do with the displacement on the very right-hand side of the beam. But again, if you click on this link to the right and you have a look at how we um, define the finite element, you'll see that the coordinate on the very right, the very last coordinate is actually a rotation. We don't want to restrict this. We want to restrict the coordinate before the last coordinate. Um, 
and that would be element minus one, uh, minus two. Okay, minus one would be the last one, minus two. Now there's just one other thing I think is important to draw to your attention. When you delete lists or elements from a list or elements from a matrix, it's always best to work backwards through it. In other words, if I, div if I uh, eliminate the, the zeroth element and then the first element, once I eliminate the zeroth element, it's actually again the zeroth element I want to eliminate, not the first. Um, actually, what would be better is to work through it backwards. Okay? In this case, it doesn't matter so much, but you'll see in a future example, uh, another example I'll do in this, in this video, that it will matter. And I'll mention it again then. I don't want to confuse you too much with this problem, but I'd like you to have heard that once. That typically what you do when you uh, eliminate multiple rows from a list or an array is you start with the, the, the innermost row or column and you work your way to the outside. In this case, it doesn't matter because taking out the zeroth row is not going to affect the fact that we then want to take out the second last row, row and column, I should say. All right, and before we run it, I'm just going to go down here to the bottom. Um, this is the number of elements that we're using. Let's write that in here. And we're going to go to six. So we're going to run it for one element, two elements, three elements, all the way up to five. Six is not inclusive in this case. And let's run it. There you go. I've got a chart here. Let me drag that onto the screen. We can have a look at it. And you can see that the fundamental frequency converges very, very quickly. When I use one element, it's off by 10.9%. Uh, but by the time I use two elements, it's already within less than half a percent error, and so on and so forth. Okay, very interesting. Let me just run it again so you can see how quickly it runs. And there it is. Again, let's run it runs very quickly okay and there's the result now let's try something a little bit different let's run it for a different problem how about if we run it for um, the cantilevered beam problem so I'm gonna write in here that this is for a simply supported beam and what happens if we now run it for a cantilever beam this is a well-known result. Uh, I'm just going to put it in here that the fundamental frequency for a cantilever beam is 1.875104 squared. For a cantilever beam. And now what about the boundary conditions for a cantilever beam? Let's go to the top where we have restrained degrees of freedom. For the cantilever beam, it's on the left hand side we'll assume it's cantilevered and it's free on the right hand side so we've got to take out the first two degrees of freedom zero would be the the displacement the vertical displacement and one would be the rotation <clears throat> but as i mentioned to you previously we actually want to do it in the order zero one why because if we took out the zeroth element first or the zeroth row and column first now everything is shifted over, so the one, the number one row and column is actually in the position zero. In fact, I could do it this way. But so that it's not confusing, we're actually going to take out the first row and column, and then we're going to take out the zeroth row and column. And by first and zeroth, I mean the index. Okay, let's run that. There you go. So the error, even just with one element, is less than half a percent, uh, but again converges very, very quickly to something very negligible within a few elements. There's the chart of what it looks like. So this is the case of the cantilever beam, and it, it does that fairly accurately. Okay. Um, what about the case of the cantilevered beam that is pinned on the right-hand side? We can try that. <clears throat> so, in fact, let me just comment both of these out. 
<coughs> excuse me, exact frequency is equal to, well, in the case of the cantilever beam that's pinned on the right, this is also a known problem, 3.926602 squared. Now, what does this look like? Well, it's we're going to remove those same two degrees of freedom, but now we also want to remove, like we did in the simply supported case, the second last degree of freedom, minus two. Let's run that. And again, we can see in, one, in the case of one element, remember that one element, the matrix is a four by four, and we're removing three of those coordinates. So it doesn't give a very good approximation. But by the time you go to two elements and three, it's, it's well within 1% error. This is what that graph looks like. As you go from one to two to three to four to five elements, the error drops very, very quickly indeed. Okay. And finally, why don't we have a look at the case of the beam that is cantilevered or fixed on both sides. And for that, all we're going to do here is, in addition to removing uh, the second last degree of freedom, we're also going to remove the last degree of freedom, minus 1. And remember what I said earlier about working your way outwards from the middle. We're going to, this one is... Uh, this one is the outside coordinate, and minus 1 is the outside coordinate. And I mentioned to you we want to start with the inner coordinates first in each case. If I put minus 1, minus 1, that would actually also be right. Because once I take out, for the reasons I explained before, once I take out the last coordinate, then this becomes the last coordinate. But so that it's less confusing, I'm going to do it this way. We're going to remo remove the second last coordinate, and then we're going to remove the last coordinate. Okay, and what I'm going to do here for the exact frequency, again, this is a known solution. Whoops, we don't want to X that out. And the solution to this is 4.730041 squared. And let me just write here that this is the fixed, fixed beam, as it's called. It's cantilevered, on, uh, not cantilevered, but built in on both sides. And this one here was the cantilever beam. That was a uh, cantilever pin beam, I'll call it. So it's cantilevered on the left or built in on the left. In fact, that doesn't make it cantilevered, I suppose, if it's pinned. So we'll call it built in. Uh, and pinned. And this one is fixed, fixed, or built in and built in, same thing. All right, let's run that. Can you tell what the problem is here? The problem is that in the first instance, I'm running this, this model with only one element. However, I'm removing all four degrees of freedom from that one element. So in fact, I'm ending up with a zero by zero global matrix, which is what's producing the error down below. So really what I want to do is come down here and say, let's just start at two elements. We can't run this for fewer than two elements because it's, it's just meaningless. It's garbage. So for two elements all the way to five elements, we run it. And here's what we get. And there you go. So again, we can see that with two elements, the error is only 1.6%, and then very quickly, by the time you get to five elements, drops to a very, very small amount. If we look at the graph of that, this is what it looks like. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, in a very short time, we've been able to convert the code from a bar element to a beam element. We were able to run uh, four different problems, four typical problems. And we find that the accuracy in terms of predicting the fundamental frequency is very, very good. By the time you've used two or three elements, it's great. Um, that's it for this video. I hope you found something useful. If you have, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Or better still, why don't you subscribe to the channel? If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch up with you in the next video.